Hey YouTubers, Mike Boars with the Mike Boars channel. Thank you for watching. We're working on our Chevy Cruze today and in this video, step-by-step -step process on how to replace your starter. For safety purposes, no matter what, 10 millimeter nut on the negative terminal to your battery, go ahead and remove this negative terminal. Cut all electrical power to your engine. Position the cable in a manner where it's not going to hop back up and make connection to the lead throughout the project. Now, your starter is a little tough to get to. It's underneath this portion here. It's down below. So what I'll do is I'll show you our new starter, what it looks like and what we need to remove. All right, YouTubers, in front of us is our brand new starter we purchased from our local Chevy dealership. And direct your attention to this threaded bolt sticking out and that threaded bolt. Now this is a 10 millimeter nut and an electrical connection point feeds on here and is secured by the 10 millimeter nut and washer. And you also have a connection point that feeds onto this threaded portion and is secured. Now the positive cable that comes from your battery and is fished all the way through the engine actually makes itself to here and is secured on by a 13 millimeter bolt. You have a 13 millimeter bolt here as well as a 13 millimeter bolt on the upper side as it sits inside the engine. We need to remove this 13 millimeter bolt as well as the upper bolt as well as the connection points off these two threaded bolts. Now in the event that you can gain access to these nuts first, definitely do that. That will alleviate this hanging from the wiring. However, if you cannot gain access to this 10 millimeter nut nor this nut, you may need to remove the 13 millimeter bolts here first to allow you to shift this starter away from the engine so you can remove those. All right, YouTubers, quick update. I had a hard time gaining access to this bolt here as well as the upper bolt that secures this entire electrical wiring harness. So what I'm going to do is remove the two 13 millimeter bolts, one on the bottom and one on the top, and then I'm going to shift this starter away from the engine to give me better access to these rear connection points. After removing that lower 13 millimeter nut, you can pull the positive cable off that threaded bolt. From here, we'll remove the upper bolt. The upper bolt, you will need to come up top and maneuver the actual ratchet under here and feed it through a gap down below. And as you can see, the actual socket is feeding all the way through to the upper 13 millimeter bolt and we will carefully remove that bolt. And once you break it loose, you can basically pull it off by hand. Do not drop this bolt into the engine. It will be very tough to find. There it is right there. And this is an aluminum bolt, not steel. So when it comes time to resecure this, you definitely do not want to over tighten it. Making progress back at the new starter and I want to show you what you're actually working with. This bolt actually feeds all the way in and goes into the engine portion. And that nut we just removed in order to allow us to pull off the positive cable, that goes on and secures that cable. Now, once you get this nut off, and then pull off that positive cable and shift that aside. You will need to use a long neck 13 millimeter socket to break this bolt loose and pull this out of the engine. So that is what you are working with with that bolt. After removing the lower and upper bolts, you can shift your starter out of its actual Bendix slot. And I should be able to gain better access to these rear cables now. Camera angle from above now and just break that 13 millimeter bolt loose. You can remove this harness connection point from the upper portion of your starter. From here, I can shift that connection point off and give me better access to the lower electrical wire. Back to the new starter real quick, just for organizational purposes. As I remove each nut and bolt, I'm putting it in where it belongs on the new starter just so I don't forget where each of these go. Now we will remove that lower 10 millimeter nut. Back to the lower bolt and what I did is I inserted a small two by four to support the actual starter so it's not hanging from the actual wire. From here, break loose that 10 millimeter nut and go ahead and remove it. Once you remove the nut, carefully pull the connection point off the thread and from here, you can carefully maneuver this starter up and out of the engine. 
There it is. Let's go grab the new starter. At this point, I got the old starter sitting next to the new starter, and I just want to compare the two, make sure that they are identical. And before actually installing the new one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bolts and hardware and insert them in the old one just so I am organized and I don't forget where to put all of these nuts and bolts. With the new 10 millimeter nut removed, I just want to verify that the old nut matches the thread and it does perfectly. From here, I'm going to carefully maneuver this in place and begin securing everything together. As you maneuver the new starter in place, be very careful, don't harm any parts as you get it in place. I'm going to rest it on the board and begin securing the electrical connection points. Electrical connection in place and I'm just going to hand tighten, get a good feel for the thread, don't cross thread it. And once I get this flush, I'm going to secure it with the ratchet and socket. At this point, the 10 millimeter nut is secured and tight. And in order to reconnect this portion of this electrical harness, there's not much play with this. So I actually have to position the starter back in place and support it with this board below to resecure this portion. One additional piece that is important, you are going to remove this and put it on the new starter in that location there. After that's secured, we are going to position this little spacer in place and align the new starter back into the engine and secure the upper 13 millimeter bolt and the lower 13 millimeter bolt. Back at the old starter, I just want to show you how this goes on. Now, we didn't put it on the new one right away because we knew it would fall off underneath the car as we were maneuvering this starter. However, that goes on like that. And on the back side, you got that little slot there that loops around this portion of the starter. Again, pull this off, insert it on the new starter. After realigning the starter back into the engine and securing the lower 13 millimeter bolt and the upper 13 millimeter bolt, grab your positive cable and loop it around the thread and re-secure the additional 13 millimeter nut. Get a good feel for the thread. Do not cross thread this nut. Go ahead and hand tighten it and then grab your 13 millimeter socket and secure it. At this point, just verify you have everything connected and tightened and secured. From here, we are going to Re-secure our negative terminal to the battery. 10 millimeter nut. Next, just verify you're not leaving any tools in the engine compartment and now it is time to start the engine and see if the new starter is working properly. Inside the vehicle now and it's time to test the new starter. Again, the old starter was completely failed. And the engine started up right away and perfectly and as you can see here we have 131,896 miles on our Chevy Cruze so in the event that you're in that ballpark odometer wise and you are replacing your starter you're not the only one that's it youtubers hope the video helped do us a favor below the video you will see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel once you do that every video that we upload you will be notified you will be able to stay up to date with us that will be awesome thanks again for watching